guys, it's me Jess and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna continue to show you guys my art series that I started and if you're following me on Instagram, I'm doing a fruit heads series and I'm painting one painting per day for the whole month of October. Be sure to check out the previous video where I show you guys the first seven paintings and today I'm gonna show you guys the next seven paintings. And all of that, I'm going to be answering your questions with an awesome Q&A. Thank you everyone for all your wishes and the warm messages that I've been getting. And also thank you to all my patrons for being the first ones to sign up. You guys are awesome. We're gonna have so much fun on there. And if you don't know what Patreon is, check out the previous video that I posted this week so you guys can check out the awesome launch that I did. Thanks to you guys for all your incredible questions. I'm gonna do my best to cover as much as possible for this week's video. And for those of you who have submitted some questions that I didn't cover this week, I'm gonna do my best to cover them next week and when I reveal you guys the next seven paintings. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the next video where I'll be answering some more questions and showing you the next seven paintings. Let's get started and let's do this. The first question that I want to touch on, and it was a really popular one in my inbox, and that is, are your parents supportive of your art career? Absolutely, my parents are probably my number one fans. They have always been supportive of my art and as well as my art career especially. And I am super grateful and thankful for their support. We are super close and they're like my best friends. So yes, they are extremely supportive. The next really popular question that I want to talk about is how did I find my art style and how did I develop my art style? To be quite honest, I think that every artist struggles to think about this question and think about how they can develop their art style. And when I was in art school and throughout the years, I was always thinking about, oh, how can I focus on an art style? What can I do to have a cohesive look? And the best valuable advice that I've gotten from someone was, your art style will tend to find you. You can't really find it and you can't really look for it because all you can do is keep practicing, keep creating, and eventually the art style is going to find you. And that's exactly what I was doing. I kept practicing, I kept trying a bunch of different styles and mediums and experimenting until I guess this art series, which I felt like it found me and I really love the style that I developed here. But I can't say that this is it and I think that every artist, and for me especially, is still growing and developing and improving. So maybe things will change and maybe things will alter, but I'm open and I'm constantly learning and experimenting. There are always room for improvements, so I'm always looking at things that I can improve or change or even try a little bit differently. So if you're worried about style, I think that stop worrying and don't think about really pertaining yourself into one category or one style or one medium. The best you can do is experiment and keep yourself occupied with some new creative activities. Eventually you're gonna get a spark and a little moment and you will know. And I really think that you should pick a subject that you really love and feel passionate about. And once you've discovered that subject, promise that your art will flourish because you feel passionate and you love it and that's what sets it forward. All right, let's talk about the next question. What first inspired you to do art and how did you think of having a channel that inspires us to do art along with you? Well, I've always been drawing since I was very little. It was something that honestly made me feel good. It felt therapeutic and I've always had a passion and love for it. Art is something that I would do 24 seven. I would constantly draw, I would doodle, I would paint. When I was very little, I loved coloring books and super neatly coloring everything in. So it was something that I've been doing for so long and been loving, truly loving what I do. Now, pertaining the YouTube channel, I started it just with some time-lapse videos that I would record because I would truly enjoy it and seeing my progress from my work. Doing the time-lapse videos actually helped me learn from my own mistakes and I saw how I would develop the drawing and it actually would create a nice little organized process for me and that way I was able to improve it in the next drawings. I would do that periodically and just for fun with very, very little subscribers. But one day I decided to share a sketchbook tour 
because I genuinely wanted to inspire others to work in their sketchbook and practice and improve their art skills since I feel that everybody has the opportunity to work hard and develop their art. And generally, I am motivated by my passion for art and my passion for creating, so I just genuinely wanted to share it with you all around the world. All right, let's talk about the next question and also a really popular one is how do I create a composition and if I collect reference first or just draw from imagination and then search for reference, how do I develop my work? All right, so this changed over the years, but at first I would strictly take photos of portraits and try to draw them so that I can practice my skills and really develop drawing and I would literally drill, drill, drill that out. There was a time where I picked a bunch of celebrities that I loved or singers or actors and I would just draw all of them with colored pencil super realistically and that helped me develop a strong sense for portraiture. But as of right now, I really do believe in taking my own references and if there was a subject that I can't reach or take photos of myself, I would go to free websites such as unsplash.com to search for royalty-free images that I can use to help create some of my pictures. Some of my big oil paintings, I actually took references of friends or family and then created some paintings. I always like to change a little bit from the reference so that you bring a little bit more of your own taste and style to it. There was a time where I was only referring to references, but I feel like I moved past that and now with this series especially, I'm taking it a step further to try and combine a reference of a realistic human and combining it with something else. So that's how I focus on it now and I do look for the reference first with along with the fruit and then I kind of morph them together in a sketch, which I do digitally to save time since I am doing one painting per day and then I transfer it and get to painting. Okay, let's talk about the next question, which was also super popular, and from where do you get that much patience to do these challenges, and how do you manage your time? So with this series and with this challenge and any challenges that I do, the 100 heads challenge I did or the 100 hands, I always started out with goals that I was able to set forward and then achieve. When it comes to patience and the simple fact that I love what I do, it never feels wrong or off or hard. So then I designate a certain amount of hours per day that I'm drawing or creating and pertaining these pieces, they take about six to eight hours, including the designing and the concept planning to the painting. So once I'm done with those, I take care of all the other things that I need to, including YouTube videos, recording audio, some Patreon things. And you can say that I do work nonstop, which I feel like sometimes I finish the painting and the day's over and then I have to do the next one the next morning, but I push through since this is a challenge and a commitment that I made for myself, but I truly love it and enjoy it all the way. After doing so many of the drawing challenges and really pushing through the hardest of the challenges, I feel like I've learned the most and I grew the most as an artist. So in a way, I guess that's why I set them up for myself because I do see the most results and I really love to challenge myself. I received another question pertaining how I learned to stylize my human slash animal characters if I started the academic way by doing figure study drawings, drawing from models or anatomically correct figures and then started styling my characters or did I do it in a free way starting off with what I like? And that's an awesome question. I did start off learning an academic artistic way. I did many, many anatomical drawings hundreds and thousands of them. I did many still lives and it really benefited me in the end. Personally, I believe that if you have the correct foundation and if you study the anatomical figure, if you study proportions correctly, throughout time you will be able to stylize better because that gives you the right foundation and base to build your stylistic ways of drawing things. And everybody has their own way of expressing themselves through art and I respect all different styles and ways in art, but what has personally helped me develop is drawing from life consistently, looking at something and drawing it, really capturing its volume and the light and form. And eventually when I felt like I got the really good hang of it, I started moving on to stylizing a bit, but I always go back to foundations and really do some anatomical studies or some still lifes to ensure I'm practicing skills at all times. Many of you guys also asked me what my art struggles are and if there's anything that I wanted to improve. Now, I know this is going to sound like a good problem to have, but it truly was a struggle for me for a while until I found like a good balance for it. 
But since I was experimenting with many mediums and many styles, there was eventually a time where it was hard to pick one. I wasn't able to decide what I really love to do. I wasn't able to decide on a medium that was my favorite, but I just love doing it all. So that was kind of like, which one do I pick? But eventually I narrowed down a list of things and mediums that were my top, top favorites. That included oil, acrylic, and simply just drawing with pencils or colored pencils and try to incorporate them into one way of working with my process where in a way I can combine them and create artwork. So this is what I did with this series. I love working in a realistic or surrealistic way. And through experimentation and time, I figured out and found a way that I can achieve the result that I like with realism that I did with oil paint with acrylic, which dries a little bit quicker while still achieving the same result. And I also geared my mind into thinking that that was a plus in a way. And I continued to create and focus on the strengths and eventually it didn't even feel like it was there anymore. All right, on to the next question. How do I cope with being compared with another artist? My personal opinion to that is that the best competition is yourself. It's easy to get discouraged by other artists on social media or around the world, but I think that switch the perspective and think of it as the artist as an inspiration to you. Instead of comparing yourself to other artists, think about yourself and how you can improve and how can you become a better artist or person from yesterday. I think that all artists, no matter what level, have room for improvement and there's always room to grow. So I always think it's best to focus on your growth as an artist and just continue to create. Alright, let's discuss another question which many of you guys are super curious about my cat Matilda. And for those of you who don't know, she shows up in my videos from time to time and I also did an oil painting video of her in my channel, so check it out. But a few of you have asked me to say something cute about Matilda, so I'll give you guys a fun fact. My parents actually saved her. My neighbors of where I used to live actually kicked her out onto the street and my parents thought that it was absolutely absurd and we took her in and she's the sweetest, most loving cat ever. I call her my fluff of happiness. But she also acts like a dog. She's able to play fetch, she could throw her a ball and she can bring it back. She always wants attention, she wants cuddles constantly, so she's always on my arms whenever I'm drawing and painting. Painting. So just so you guys know, she's probably sitting on my lap somewhere while I'm painting all of these paintings. But yeah, I love her, she's super sweet, and thank you guys so much for asking about her. Oh, and someone asked if Matilda paints too, and she probably does know how to since she knows all my ways and process since she sits and watches me all day long. <laughs> so most likely if she tried, I'm sure she could. Alright, let's discuss the next few questions. A lot of you guys asked about my equipment and what I started on with YouTube and to be honest I have never changed it since. I use my iPhone and a microphone and that's about it. I have always used my iPhone to record. I just purchased some really nice lighting and I sit by the window and that gives you some really nice window light and that is the best for shooting artwork. So if you're looking for a really good tip for shooting your art or for your videos or whether you just want to do it for yourself, definitely get some window light and that's going to be the best for you. I found that natural lighting gives you the best results whenever you're shooting and also the color accuracy is always on point. Okay, a lot of you guys also want to know how old I am and I'm in my early 20s. I graduated from art college and I'm now pursuing art full time. And this brings me to the next topic of a few questions. What was the hardest part of starting your shop, your channel, etc. and how did you overcome it? Pertaining my shop, the hardest part was deciding on the artwork and things that I should offer and actually getting the website together. There's a lot of research and tons and tons of hours of research and prep that I did before I launched it. I did my website from scratch through Squarespace all on my own and everything that I do, I edit my videos on my own, I do my own shop updates, I do my own printing. So I guess the hardest part was gathering it all together, but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. I learned so much and I love doing everything on my own because then I get to learn, I get to research and I have the control over how I can do things. Now, the hardest part of my channel is to meet the deadlines of every week of posting. I actually spend loads of hours of editing and filming and voicing, so that takes up a lot of chunk of my time, but I still enjoy giving out the videos to you guys and putting out the content and sharing my passion every day. Okay, let's move on to the next question. 
How do you stay focused and inspired every day to create? What truly inspires me is picking topics that I truly love and feel passionate about. For example, I chose to do these fruits because I genuinely love food, I'm a big food lover, and I also found myself always doodling portraits, so I put two and two together and I surprise myself every day to creating these pieces. And I'm also truly inspired by my surroundings, which is why I really enjoy going urban sketching where I can sit and just draw from life. Now, I think we have time for one more question and I want to finish it off strong for you guys. And that is, what advice do you have for upcoming artists other than to draw every single day? Well, I do think that drawing every single day is super important. But other than that, my advice to everyone always is to set goals for yourself. Really think about what you want to achieve, whether it's something small in your drawings or something larger in the future. My advice would also be to set some time frames for yourself. This way, when you know the time frame you want to achieve your goal at, you make sure that you achieve it. I also find that staying organized is super important as well. So my advice would be to just write all these goals down and write some things that you would like to try or a maybe improve and then just go for it. As long as you're determined and stay on track, you will surprise yourself on what you can achieve. I definitely surprise myself every day, but I make sure I stay on track and stay determined and keep pursuing my passion. So with all that being said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. Thank you everyone who submitted these incredible questions. I think today's video was super helpful for many of you guys. Stay tuned for next week's video where I'll show you guys how I painted the next seven paintings and we'll continue the Q&A. I'm also posting the finished products on my Instagram, so stop by on there and check them out. I hope that wherever you are, you find the time to create today. Whether it's starting a challenge, drawing your pet, or simply doodling. I hope you find time in your day to do what you love and do what makes you happy. I'm so happy I get to share my passion with you guys and show you guys what I do on my day-to-day -day life. I've been loving creating these paintings every single day for the month of October and I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Thank you all so much for watching once more and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!